Hello, my name is Mark Hermling. I'm a senior product manager at Wind River, focusing on, on multi-core and virtualization. And I want to talk to you today about how you can use virtualization to embed Microsoft Windows inside of your embedded system. Everybody is familiar with virtualization. In virtualization, you take a single or multi-core processor, you run a virtual machine monitor or hypervisor on top of that single or multi-core processor, and then on top of that hypervisor, you create multiple virtual machines. And these virtual machines are abstractions of the physical hardware. They're strongly separated such that they are fault containers. So anything that happens in virtual machine doesn't impact virtual machine, uh, the other virtual machine. And inside of these virtual machines, of course, then you can run your guest operating systems and your applications. And your guest operating systems can be real-time operating systems such as VxWorks or Linux, or they can be more general purpose operating systems such as Microsoft Windows. And that's specifically what I, what I want to talk to you about today. So one of the things I can do with virtualization is that I can take an old system that I may already have with Microsoft Windows running on a processor on a box somewhere and another part of my system that may be running on a different box on a different processor running some real-time content uh, on VxWorks or Linux and I can consolidate these two different boxes into one box. So I can take a single um, box running um, a Wind River hypervisor and on top of that Wind River hypervisor I can run Microsoft Windows as well as VxWorks Linux. Now since I'm running Windows this has to be an Intel processor uh, and in, the, in this case, I have a, a dual-core Intel processor running my hypervisor with Windows and VxWorks on top of it. So I can consolidate my existing systems. I can innovate. I can add more new stuff to it without impacting the system that I already have. And, and of course, this is important. I need to have good performance. And if I do that, I can significantly reduce my bill of materials cost. Bill of materials cost. I can reduce the amount of maintenance cost and maintenance work because I only have one system now which also delivers higher reliability and those type of things. And the hypervisor, as I said before, uh, ensures strong separation between these different virtual machines. So I can reboot Windows and leave my real-time partition up and running. I can reboot my real-time partition and keep, keep my Windows up and running. So they're as if they're two separate processors, but they're really uh, on top of one physical system. So let's go into a short demonstration here. Uh, I have a target system, and it's a remote target system, actually. It's in, a, in a, one of our target labs here at, at Wind River. And on this target, I will run Windows, VxWorks, on top of our Wind River hypervisor. Uh, but I'm, of course, uh, in my office here, and, and I need to see and, and connect to this system. So what I do is I really want to see the serial of this system, the serial output COM1. I want to see the output of the, uh, the VGA card, because Windows is graphics, of course. So I want to see that. And I want to use Workbench to, uh, to work with my VxWorks uh, instance. So what I've done is I've connected this target to a, a KVM switch and a, uh, a port server. And all the output from this target is, is connected into the server, serial, VGA, mouse, and keyboard. And then I have a VGA viewer and a serial viewer that I connect over TCP IP to this KVM box. And then Workbench goes straight to the target uh, to connect over Ethernet to my target. So my target uh, is actually a, an Intel quad-core, and, and you'll see that in my short demonstration. Okay, so this is my, uh, my demo setup. Let me connect to my workbench, and what you can see here is a, a workbench project. I have my uh, VxWorks image project, my VxWorks source build, and my hypervisor integration project, and all of that is in one convenient development environment. And then I have my very basic Hello World project. It's not rocket science, but it gets the, uh, the thought across. Uh, here in the bottom is my, my VxWorks instance. Uh, this is my target connection. So if I, if I click this button, my workbench will connect to VxWorks uh, and will connect the debugger. So that will go one, two, three, four. And voila. And this is uh, now connected. I can see my kernel tasks here. If I make this a little bit bigger, um, I can see all my kernel tasks that are running. And I can treat this VxWorks as if it's a normal VxWorks. Now, of course, this VxWorks is running on the hypervisor, and I'll get back to that in a second. Since this is a, is a normal VxWorks, I can, of course, um, debug my tasks. So I can actually build this task and debug it. It'll actually uh, connect to my uh, VxWorks debugger. It'll start the task, and it'll stop it at a breakpoint. And at this point in time, uh, the application is compiled, downloaded to my target running. 
and uh, I, I can do my normal debugger, step, stop, and, and those type of things. Uh, also, I can use all the other uh, Wind River tools. I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on what runs underneath VxWorks. So here you can see the VxWorks uh, output. Uh, this is the, the banner at startup. And um, you can see that my uh, Hello World was started, and there's a breakpoint here at main. And this is great. This is my serial port, as I said. Uh, it's connected remotely. And um, I can do with a with this VxWorks what I do with a normal VxWorks. But what I can actually do is I can drop into what we call the hypervisor shell. And when I drop into the hypervisor shell, this now is the hypervisor shell, I can ask for a PS. And a PS shows me exactly uh, the processes that are running right now. Well, first of all, I can see that I have up to three CPU cores where the bottom two cores are actually not, not being used or some uh, hypervisor management tasks that run on it, but nothing more than that. And I can see that my first two cores, my core uh, 0 and my core 1, have Windows running and VxWorks running. So the VxWorks that I was just connecting to is actually running on, uh, on, on CPU 1, the second core of this quad-core machine. Well, that's very interesting. So let's uh, connect back to uh, VxWorks here. I'm out of my hypervisor debugger. So I can actually show you Windows. Here's, sorry, my KVM port has exited. So let me show you Windows here. And here we go. So this is the Windows that's actually running on that box. It's coming out, uh, Windows is displaying on VGA, and that VGA is captured in a KVM switch and then delegated to me through uh, some viewer that runs inside of, a, of an Internet Explorer. And I can show you here, indeed, that um, I can start anything. Uh, it has a normal uh, Ethernet connection. So both VxWorks as well as Windows have an Ethernet card in this particular configuration. And I go, can go to FIFA.com and uh, look at what the, uh, the scores are of the latest World Cup games. Now, what you'll see is that uh, performance is not bad. And it's the main lag that you see here is actually due to the connection over VGA over the KVM switch. It's not actually... Uh, the, the, the target itself is running at native speed. Uh, the, the lag that you see here is all having to do with the fact that this is a, a remote system. So this is Windows, and what you'll see, uh, this is a full-fledged Windows. It runs over one core, has full control over that one core. And I can do things such as restart my Windows. So I can turn off my computer, say restart. And what you'll see is, of course, Windows will shut down, and Windows will reboot. But what you won't see is the BIOS screen. Typically when you reboot BIOS you do a hard reset and the entire machine power cycles. Well that's not what happens here. So we re reboot Windows and we immediately go into uh, a reboot cycle. We skip the BIOS, we reset Windows and, and Windows will uh, come up all by itself. And that's the part that I was talking about earlier. This is a completely separate Windows uh, instance running in its own virtual PC. Windows actually doesn't know that's running in a virtual space. And VxWorks is running next to it in its own complete virtual space. And they're completely separate. So if something goes wrong with Windows, that does not impact VxWorks. And if something goes ro uh, wrong with uh, VxWorks, that does not impact Windows. So you can see Windows is booting here. I can go back to my workbench, and you'll still see um, VxWorks running. And you'll also see here my WRHV win resetting the virtual machine. That, me that message was printed out when I did the actual reset uh, command in Windows. And you can also see that my debugging is still alive. I'm still at my hello world here, and I can still step through that if I want to. And you can see that in the other virtual machine, Windows here is going through its uh, disk check, is happy, and it will, uh, it will come back up. And apparently I have to install an update to my flash player. So that's what I wanted to show you today. Uh, I hope the demonstration was interesting to you. What I showed you was Windows running in its own complete virtual machine that it can independently reboot, running on top of the uh, Wind River hypervisor. VX works in a completely other um, virtual machine space that's completely unaffected by whatever Windows does. Uh, and you can use this technology to consolidate your systems, to innovate while maintaining your, the performance that you need for your real time and your, uh, your graphics tasks. That was it for today. Have a great day. And thanks for your, your attention. Bye now.